Welcome to our tutorial on using Explaining Human Culture, an open access database produced by the Human Relations Area Files at Yale University. For more than a century now, cultural anthropologists have been traveling to various parts of the world to study and describe the life ways of different groups of people. Known as ethnographic field work, this type of research involves making observations and conducting interviews in order to understand the social and cultural life of a group. Ethnographers tend to report the results of their fieldwork in written form, producing field notes, articles, and books that allow readers to understand the particular people described. Taken in its entirety, the ethnographic record gives us a picture of the amazing diversity of human culture across our species. Cross-cultural researchers seek to discover and explain patterns and variation in human culture using this written record, asking questions such as, which aspects of culture are constant across human societies and which vary? What accounts for these similarities and differences? To answer the first question, about cultural universals and variation. Cross-cultural researchers describe the frequency of certain customs across a representative sample of societies. But most are also interested in answering the second question, moving beyond mere description by trying to explain cultural similarities and differences. Such an effort typically begins with researchers searching the scholarly literature on a given topic of interest to find previous explanations, building upon existing research with ideas of their own. But it is not enough to have a good idea, one that plausibly accounts for a given phenomenon. Rather, cross-cultural researchers derive testable explanations from theory, known as hypotheses, and use the evidence of the ethnographic record to test these hypotheses. Sometimes a hypothesis is supported and sometimes it is not, but either way we learn important information about what predicts different cultural patterns. The first cross-cultural study was presented by Edward Burnett Tyler in 1889. Over a century later, cross-cultural researchers have conducted thousands of studies investigating a range of cultural behaviors exhibited throughout the world, creating a vast body of anthropological knowledge. Created in 2016 by the Human Relations Area Files, Explaining Human Culture is designed to help researchers navigate this large body of cross-cultural literature providing professionals and student researchers alike with an accessible way to review what has been learned in previous cross-cultural studies and to discover what has yet to be investigated. Explaining Human Culture contains standardized summaries of over 1,000 studies spanning a century and a quarter of cross-cultural research. Each summary includes a brief abstract of the study as well as information about the samples used, the hypotheses tested, the variables examined, the tests conducted, and the results of these tests. This makes Explaining Human Culture a great resource for conducting literature reviews and developing original research studies that refine, revise, contest, and otherwise build upon this literature. New studies are added regularly. Because of time and labor constraints, we limited ourselves to cross-cultural research involving 10 or more societies, cultures, or traditions. The database is organized into four main sections. The documents section contains a searchable collection of reports on the results of over 1,000 individual cross-cultural studies. The hypotheses section contains a searchable list of the hypotheses that were investigated in these studies. The variables section contains a searchable list of the variables that these studies use to investigate the hypotheses. And lastly, the topical summary section broadly reviews cross-cultural findings on specific topics, such as hunter-gatherers, sexuality, gender, childhood, and religion. We try to summarize 
what this cross-cultural research tells us about cultural similarities and differences with respect to each broad topic, as well as discuss what we do not yet know. Let's begin the tutorial by clicking the Documents tab. Suppose we are interested in the topic of religion. Typing religion into the search bar populates a number of options. You can choose one of the options that pop up or keep your original phrasing. Let's choose religion. Here we find a complete list of the documents summarized in the database. For each document, we see the title of the text, the first author's name, the journal in which the text was published, the year of publication, the number of hypotheses tested in the study, and a short abstract summarizing the study. There are also options to explore related documents, to cite the text, and to find additional text written by the author. Clicking on the title of a study takes us to its full page view. Here we see more detailed publication information and a cite option. Clicking on the button brings up a Choose Desired Citation light box with options for citing the original document or the Explaining Human Culture report. Clicking on the Original Document Citation button, we find citation information for the text in four different formal citation styles, along with options for exporting the citation. The same options are available for the Explaining Human Culture report citation. In the full page view, each author's name is hyperlinked to reveal additional texts written by that author that are summarized in the EHC database. Below the abstract, there is a samples table. The samples used column lists the samples utilized in the study, hyperlinked to reveal other studies that used these samples. The coded data column indicates whether the researchers developed their own codes, used codes developed by other researchers, or a combination of their own codes and those developed by others. The comment column includes any notes about the text that have been added by HARAF analysts. Scrolling down to the hypotheses table, we find information about the hypotheses tested in the study and the reported results of these tests. The hypothesis column to the left provides information about the hypotheses tested in the study and often provides a page number citation in the original study. The supported column to the right reveals the reported results of these tests, which are listed as supported, partially supported, or not supported. Clicking on a hypothesis reveals more detailed information about the statistical tests conducted to test the hypothesis and the variables examined. Under the test name heading, we find columns containing information regarding the type of test used, if known, whether the hypothesis was supported by this test, the probability of the result being due to chance or the significance, a coefficient or measure of association, and whether the test was one or two tail. There are three columns in the table of variables. Clicking a variable name reveals information on associated documents, hypotheses, and possible other subject matches. Variable type can be labeled as dependent, independent, association if the hypothesis did not claim a causal association between variables, or control if the researcher controlled for a variable but did not consider it critical to the hypothesis tested. And lastly, OCM terms, indicating the subject codes in EHRAF that might match the variables in the study. The Outline of Cultural Materials is a classification system for ethnographic subjects. The OCM contains over 90 major subjects, with over 700 subcategories. Clicking on an OCM term reveals a scope note lightbox with information on the kinds of ethnographic data that the code entails and an option to find associated variables. There is also a table of related hypotheses with information regarding other hypotheses from the same study or from similar studies.
Use the back button on your browser to return to the document results page. To the right of the search bar and the search button, there is a button labeled search tools. Clicking on it reveals filtering, viewing, and sorting options, as well as information regarding search syntax, which is covered in another tutorial. Clicking on filter reveals options for refining the results by source or type of publication, published, which offers date range options, author with several of the most represented authors in the database listed as options, subjects with some of the top subjects in the database listed, and sample with options to filter by seven different samples, including the standard cross-cultural sample, the ethnographic atlas, the paper or microfiche hiraf collection of ethnography, eHiraf World Cultures, the online version of the hiraf collection of ethnography, and the probability sample files, a subset of both hiraf collections. Click on one or more options, then apply filter to see the refined results. There are also filtering options for the hypotheses and variables tabs. From the home page, click on Summaries to find a list of modules covering a variety of topics such as sexuality and religion. Clicking on Sexuality, we find a brief abstract, followed by options to download the summary in PDF and EPUB formats. The summary introduces the topic, provides information about what we have learned from the cross-cultural research on the topic, and points out gaps in our knowledge. For example, we have learned a great deal about sex taboos across human cultures, but very little is known about female homosexuality. The summary also includes a link to teaching exercises on the topic using the eHRAF World Cultures database. Nine topical summaries have been produced thus far, with new summaries added every year. Thank you for watching this tutorial on using the Explaining Human Culture database. For a tutorial on doing advanced searches in explaining human culture using search syntax, please look for part two of this tutorial. And be sure to check out our tutorials for the eHRAF World Cultures database and stay tuned for additional video content. In addition to subscribing to our YouTube channel, you can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter by visiting our homepage at graph.yale.edu. Thanks again and good luck with your research.